Hello and welcome to the Superpower Dare Die team. I'm Peter. And I'm Rick. And today we're reviewing episode three of The Book of Boba Fett, Something About Mos Espa. Go, go, Power Rangers! Now this episode's called The Streets of Mos Espa. So it starts off in the throne room. We've got um, Boba and Fennec looking at a big map with their, their robot. The one thing I've noticed in the episodes I've watched so far, all three of them, is that every every episode opens with something familiar. So you, you either get a shot of a location that you know or there's something across. So this one started up with the almost the return of the Jedi. So like a spider, oh, alien spider yeah, the type. Spider, yeah, spider uh, that, that moves in front of the uh, Jabba's palace. And yeah. So th they're doing these things to make you realise you're in this uh, probably post-Jedi Star Wars universe and then the story happens. Yeah. So while they're um, looking at the map, they get a, a visitor. It's a um, local businessman coming in to complain, played by Stephen Root, who I know from um, News Radio. Yeah. And office and space, and he was in Get Out recently, or fairly so recently. As my, just like an English cricketer, has my um, famous surname. I love it, Stephen Root. Does that mean the same thing everywhere? Is it means here? Do you think? Stephen is that Root. is that is that an it Australian always, thing? It always means um, uh, something that a plant sends down into the ground. Yeah. There. The the water trader. The businessman, the water trader, has yeah. come to uh, plead, ask the almighty Boba for something, who just sort of sits in that chair, like, waiting for people to come in. Well, that's what crime lords do. Have you watched The Godfather? Same thing. Underbelly? I think they all did it there, too. Yeah, I don't know. Um, so he goes, he agrees to... Um, to go and sort out the problem and the um or well, Stephen Root says that he'll um double his tribute can I, so i guess that's like a payment like a i think the tribute's their pay, is that's their payoff money I think. yeah their protection money like in you know, a mobster yeah. type thing two things happen for me in this scene you've got um, Stephen Root's character saying uh, you're not respected on the streets boba and He's also handled in a very comically way, comical way, comical yeah. way, comical way, um, and it's it's happened before with other characters where I don't know what the what the, what the tone's supposed to be. Yeah, so it seems a bit overplayed, over the top, doesn't it? So it doesn't look mm. like it's being played as a comedy scene, but they're playing on that. No, because nothing he said was particularly comical or anything. So, no, but it's just the way he he played. Yeah. It, so. Part of that thing that ruins the Boba Fett thing for me because I and I know you don't care, but I remember him as some sort of scary, not scary, but just like just dangerous, dangerous yeah. character. Where now he's just he seems just a bit senile and not sure what to do. So Boba and um, Fennec go to confront these um, water thieves yeah. and. It's just a. I don't know if they're supposed to be teenagers or young adults, but they've got um, very colourful speeder. Are they speeder bikes? I think they're speeder bikes, and it, yeah. Straight away, I've just. It looks like Power Rangers light to me because you're in this gritty world with it's just dirt and everything kind of rusted and old, and you've got these bright brand new looking things. Yeah, it does. It does stand out a bit. Yeah, I mean, I suppose there's no reason why they couldn't have it, but it just—it's just not what we're used to, I suppose. There's lots of reasons why they couldn't have it. But I did notice in this scene that um, Boba Fett says to them, "Like, you're in the workers' district. Like, you should have yeah. jobs." Yes. So, so that sort workers. of indicates a bit of a like a class system there. Yeah, and, and I think the workers' district was brought up earlier in on the map thing with the robot. Okay. So that's who someone owns that crime syndicate as the workers' district. Someone else thing, whatever. And that comes up because they say they haven't got any money to pay for water, and because the guys they steal because the guys charging way too much. And then Stephen Root comes out from behind the corner like he's been hanging around there the whole time listening, which was a bit odd yeah. to me. You were but supposed to be fixing this. You were yeah. Supposed to be, yeah. 
Yeah. So Boba Fett ends up hiring them as like, hench people, I suppose. I Support crew. Security yeah, crew, I'm not sure. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. then... Only fans? So then we're back in his back to tank and we have a flashback. Um, he's leaving the um, Tuscan Raiders to go deal with the Pike Syndicate at Moss Eisley. This is... This is a big problem of the episode for me because it just seems to be, okay, I'm slowly leaving one location to do to go to another location and then I'm just going to be given new information that makes me turn around and go back to another location slowly. And nothing seems to happen except filler or maybe some characters that I don't know that other people might like kind of being able to be placed in the background. Yeah. So when he does, he arrives in... Um... Moz Eisley, and you just see in the background, you say um, the character played by Amy Sadara. She's a mechanic that was in The Mandalorian. I think she was in one episode in season one and um, one or two in season two. Yeah, okay. But it was just a bit of a throw. It doesn't really matter if you don't know who they are. Yeah, I guess it's like Marvel movies where they throw, you know, if you're familiar with the comics, they'll throw a character in yeah. the background to for other people to have a jack. So I think that just indicates that we're getting closer to in the flashbacks to where he meets the Mandalorian. Yeah. So it's I, around that time. So I haven't seen Mandalorian. So, again, you're recognising things that I don't. Yeah, I and I think, yeah. I think they really did set up Boba Fett really well in the Mandalorian, which is a shame. Is like It probably should be set up better in the book of Boba Fett, but I think... They set up his return a lot better in in the Mandalorian. Yeah, okay, so this is this is episode three of a six or seven episode series, and it, if I was the director, this is not the episode I would put in episode three because you've got a short time to work with. This feels like a filler episode where you've just got people walking here, finding information, walking, going back, walking there, finding information. It's just a lot of exposition about maybe where it's going um i would have kept this one as a fast pace like after last week's tuscan raider that's the slow um uh, lone rider what did we say like that that but that... like the clint eastwood man with no yeah, name yeah um man with no name comes in so so it was all based on that so then you bring it back to the present have a kind of fast paced episode with a really big cliffhanger then have your filler episode with maybe a little bit more, okay, this is why you're experiencing these things. He was kind of like a co-star in his own show in this episode in some ways, particularly towards the end. Yeah, so he goes to see the Pike Syndicate and the Pike Syndicate said that they don't want to pay too lots of people. It turns out that they've made a deal with those raiders that we've seen in previous episodes and then he goes back and finds that his um, Tuscan friends have been murdered by that same group. The two bits of, I, I guess the two bits of story writing that move the story forward are him coming back to see that his uh, village, his uh, Tuscan Raider village has been wiped out and he meets up with the Power Rangers light. I think that's... There's another probably plot element at the end as well. Oh, yeah, well. yeah, towards the end, yep. Yeah. But um, did you think that there was enough of the Tuscan Raiders there? It didn't look like there was – it couldn't have been the whole group, surely. It, like, it didn't seem no, like – looked, It looked a little barren. So I think maybe we, we might see some survivors later, perhaps. Yeah. It, it could be a setup. It could be you know, just a little – uh, we'll throw that little nugget out there. Because so the, gotta, the warrior that that trained him, who I've, him, who I've yeah. read this week, was is actually a, a female character, yes, which I didn't pick that, up. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, so she wasn't there, so perhaps and the she'll turn kid, up later. Yeah, little kid I didn't see either. Little so. kid wasn't there either. So. Perhaps they'll turn up like later. And then uh, Boba's abruptly woken up and he's back to tank by the Wookiee that we saw last episode, whose name is Kurosantan, I think that's how you say it, Kurosantan. Yeah. Yeah. And so we have we have a big a big fight, and he's pretty formidable foe. Mm. Um, 
Boba Fett looks a bit like a baby with his little white nappy on and bald and covered in water. I yeah. thought I thought he's you know he's helped out by his new recruits, but I thought everybody took a bit too long to get to him. Like, are they guarding him, is, or is Kurosatan just a really good? assassin and can sneak into places without being detected i don't know what it was i'm gonna go with uh the power rangers were just sort of not hadn't quite suited up yet uh anyway they were quite ineffective against like they sort of went stab zap something like that kind of showed... shot him a few times he's a tough guy yeah but it's, that it's like being, it looked like it was being shot with an air gun or something like that i don't know it's nah. They've well, got a few him. blows. Then no, the Gamorrean, the yeah, and then the Gamorrean guards come up and he just tackles them down the stairs and they um, somehow maneuver him over the trap door of the Ranker pit. And Fennec like, turns up eventually. So Fennec, the one who's supposed to be his right hand person, um, goes, All right, now I'll turn up and I'll just drop it. And that's because um, Boba's said to her, look, Fennec, I, I know you're just trying to help, but I feel a bit creeped out when you're watching me in the back to tank. So that's done. A, a kind of okay-ish fight scene. Yeah. People were there for him. Uh, he comes out after being beaten up. He comes out in his... in his um pay the mayor visit now. Yeah, but he comes out in his lovely dressing gown, doesn't yeah, he? Like, right. yeah. <laughs> he is a bit of an old man, isn't he? So, old man Boba. Maybe if they called it old man Boba, you'd like it better, like have, old right, man Logan. Yeah. Well, maybe that's how you need to think of it as old man, like an old man Logan. It's old man Boba. Okay, I will do that from now on. But yeah, so then he um, has visitors at the door, and it's the twins, the two hut twins, and they've come to apologize about. Sending an assassin to kill them, which is a pretty quick yeah. turnaround. Given that they don't know if he's alive or dead, we don't know if the assassin did the job or not. But they um, they say that they were deceived and that there's someone else going for Jabba's title yep. and that they're getting off the planet because they don't want to be involved in a war. Yep, and they give him a gift. They give him a gift, which is... Danny Trejo. <laughs> Danny Trejo in Gladiator wear. Yep. Um, and and his little pet baby. It's a baby Rancor. Oh no, the Rancor. That was me doing my best C3PO. Oh no, the Rancor. And I'm. I thought, why would they bring that? But I'm guessing that they thought that they were going to be taken over Jabba's palace so maybe they acquired a rancor so they could have one in that rancor pit yeah. now they're going they don't need one so they'll think oh we'll just give it to him they've used the rancor pit twice now so the next time they use it there needs to be something in there so it's i think it's a little paint by the numbers so then boba gets the wookie brought out uh chris and tan and offers him back to the huts the huts yeah don't want him because they're leaving they, they were just using him for while they're on the planet and so that, they go yeah in that little assassination attempt that yeah <laughs> makes sense in the end uh, yeah but then like uh, boba lets him go um and so i think he'll be back i think he'll he'll come back and work with boba later as, as best as a wookie can look surprised i think he looks surprised that he was yeah. going to go run off and then i think he might come back a la han solo in star wars that original movie uh last minute um okay yeah then we have a scene in the rancor pit with um the rancor keeper danny trejo who is a big favorite of the director robert rodriguez who's been in lots of his movies he does taco commercials in australia oh and he's um Got his own little franchise, Machete Movies. That's Robert Rodriguez as well. Yep. And so we have a bit of a bonding time with the Rancor and we learn that Rancors are quite emotional creatures. creatures that get attached to their owners. And at first I thought, what? This is a bit on the nose. And then I just remembered the um, 
the Rancor Keeper in, in Jedi who was bawling his eyes out when his pet died, which was played for a joke. But which, yeah, absolutely was played I can see that connection now. I can sort of um, accept no, that. I understand that what they were doing. So it was played for a joke in Jedi, and they're trying now to explain the creature further. But when they talked about the first person it sees it uh, bonds to, something like that, and I was just taken back to the Twilight books. It was just going, what are we ripping off now? This is terrible. So the robot comes down saying that the mayor's not uh, available for the next 28 days or something like that. 20, 20 Yeah, that's days. right. And he goes, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go and meet with him now. Uh, and it turns out that it's the whole big ruse. The mayor's not even there. Like, there's no. a whole kind of delaying scene. You can't come in. He's he's too busy. Maybe I can reschedule something. Turns out the mayor's already gone. They're, and his assistant. Well, you were talking about a bit over the top performances before, and I find the the guy that's playing the assistant is a bit over the top. There. And then then there's the speeder chase scene where he's well, I, the, the, like he does a bit of a Fargo, doesn't he? He's just like in Fargo. Well, he's going. I'll just check those. I'll just check those number plates now, and then you see him driving off in the background. It was a bit like that. Like they going, he goes, "I just check them there now," and he goes and, in and, and then yeah, it's and like driving off. Just, yeah. yeah, and that's, that gone. scene was okay sure. with the car chase. It, I wasn't sure if it felt Star Warsy, but it was it was okay. And there was lots of droids. There was lots of droid cameos. Like there was an R two unit. There was a, a protocol droid. Protocol there, was a, a, there was one or two mouse droids that zoomed by at some point. And one of those stupid ones that you hammer on the head and they go... Yeah, from, from, from the Phantom, Phantom Menace. Menace. Yeah. They were in there earlier with the mechanic from the Mandalorian yeah. as well. So and so the the chase ends with the... And the woman does a sort of slide out on the, the speeder. And that was in trailers. It wasn't in a trailer that I saw, but I saw people making memes of that weeks ago and speculating of who this this new character is going to be and that sort of thing. Is it going to be Boba Fett's daughter? Is it going to be, you know, who is it? Um, they were all wrong. They were wrong. They're just, she's just part of this gang. And so Boba Fett just flies. Like I said before, he seemed a bit like a supporting player. He just flies down yeah, after they've caught him. <laughs> and, yes, and he finds out that the mayor is working with that. the... Yeah. <laughs> But um, maybe it takes a bit a bit long to like jumpstart the jetpack these days or something. I don't know. But yeah, so the the assistant <laughs> the assistant like confides that yes, the mayor is working with the park syndicate, and then we have a scene a bit later about one of the new henchmen seeing all these um, pikes coming in. And they suggest that there's going to be more and. There's going to be a war, and Boba Fett's basically well, bring it on. So I'm guessing he's going to. I mean, I, I I speculate that he's going to get the living Tuscan Raiders to come and join him. I think he's going to get um, the the Wookie. I've forgotten his name now. I think he's like some of these characters that have popped up are going to be part of Boba Fett's team, and we'll have a bit of a war between them and the Pike Syndicate. But that's this just my what, speculation. But this is what didn't feel right about this episode because you, it led up to this part of the end where there's a war coming. But at no stage, like most of the episode was Boba Fett just getting pushed around from one to the other to the other, looking confused. Oh, well, the war's not with me, it's with someone else. Oh, well, you be good. I'm going there now. It was just. <laughs> But I guess that uh, you know that they, they thought that they were setting up for the for the remainder of the episodes. But I didn't think it was a very strong episode. Like it's nah. the weaker of the three. I hope That's that. Not saying a lot. Well, I've quite enjoyed the other two, but this one. Okay. I mean, the, this one had its moments, but it just I didn't think it was as strong as the other others. Okay. So I hope it's building up to something like bigger and. I'll forgive it if... It actually felt like a TV show, this episode. But there's some episodes I've watched of Mandalorian that have felt like a movie, and I've been like sitting there thinking, this is like a movie. Whereas this, watching this episode, I just thought, this feels like a TV show, not like a, you know, like a... Yeah. felt like that filler episode, which... Yeah. I, like, I, like I said earlier, it should have been the next episode being the filler one. They needed, to, they needed a bit more of a build-up where he's in there, oh, I can't wait to see what happens next. 
yeah this episode which sort of like, fills in some blanks or whatever it like i said it feel it it's him wandering around getting bits of information it's kind of nothing yeah and and it was like you said there's a we find out that um his tuscan tribe have been slaughtered we find out that the mayor's working with the pike syndicate and that's about it really have we resolved the hut stuff now i think that's been resolved i know i think i don't understand where a war's coming because it's never felt like this is boba against the universe or anything like that i think it's all the pike syndicate coming in because they said how many were there there's 12 and there'll be more where that comes from so i think but is the war for his dianara whatever i think so because the the this is my the, point. Like, the hut said that there was a that the mayor had offered uh, someone else his position or yeah, but, promised or something. Yeah, but this is what I don't get. Like it's it's the war's coming, but there's no there's been no real. Boba Fett hasn't been threatening. He hasn't been going around kicking ass, no. and and he's just kind of been the benevolent. I'm walking around and getting told where to go next. I mean, he did take the position by force and just assume that everyone would be okay with it, I suppose. So thank you for watching our video. If you enjoyed it, please have a look at our other videos and like and subscribe to our channel. You can follow us on our Facebook page. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. And you can find us there. Yep. All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. See you next time.